All right, guys, here's what's on the bench today. We have a Yamaha, and this is an AEX uh, 602, and it needs restrings, it needs tested, uh, it needs cleaned up, it needs intonated. So let's get started. First thing I want to do is test on the electronics. They seem fine. This guitar's got those um, P90s in them. Dog ear P90s. This is what they call the dog ear. And... Uh, I got this guitar when I bought that last truckload of guitars. This was one of them that was in that truckload. And uh, he's got a really random set of strings on here. So they definitely got to come up off of here. Let's see, our low string is a 58. And then our B string is a 13, but the high E string he has on here is like a 17. So these strings definitely need to come off. We just gotta shine this thing up and get it ready to put out front and try to sell it. This guitar is for sale. Yamaha makes great instruments. Uh, I'm thinking this guitar, after looking on reverb for a few minutes, they're bringing in the three, 350 neighborhood. So it's not too expensive, but I can't get that much out of it in its current condition with these old strings and everything. So I do, I restring, you know, 90% of the guitars that come in. I have to shine them up and get them ready to resell. It's got a regular Tunomatic style bridge on there, tons of dirt. This guitar deserves to have a nice fret set of strings on it. Okay, if I can get this one off of here. There we go. And then, um, with my 10 millimeter wrench, open in wrench, I snug the tuners down. So the guy that owned this collection, he did a couple of weird things to some of his guitars. On this one, let me show you what he did. So on this one, first thing he did is he took his knife or something or a little saw blade or something, and he cut out a little wing out of here. And then on the logo, he painted it and highlighted over top of the existing logo. That could probably come off if I took some paint thinner or something to that. I could probably get that off there, but it's not too bad. I'm going to leave it. And again, almost every guitar in that collection that I bought was missing the truss rod cover and so yeah that's unfortunate when that happens okay so got some of this Gibson guitar polish and I'm just going to clean the top of this guitar
It's got its three-way switch right here that seems like it works perfectly. Big dog ear P90s. A lot of guys want to experiment. I see a lot of guys that come in and they're always asking me, hey man, what do you got with P90s? Okay, so both of these little thumb wheels right here uh, seem really, really tight, but I think they're in a good spot, so I'm not sure I want to mess with those. Those things are, oh, I cut my, cut my finger yesterday and I can hardly do anything. Those are really tight. But they still turn, so I think, let me see. Yeah, they still turn, so it's okay. I don't think they're broken or jammed down in there or anything weird like that. Let's take a look at the fret ends. All right. They're, they're not too bad. But I do have... I've got my Stumac fret file right here. And it's got a rounded edge on the bottom of it. And I can go along here and I can kind of hit some of the rough ones. While I'm here, I might as well just real, real quickly just sort of knock them down a little bit. Fret ends are very important when it comes to selling a used guitar. If there's some fret sprout, you might as well forget it. Uh, guys don't want to buy the guitar. There we go. That feels good. And then I got a little Stumac fiber, a uh, microfiber cloth. And I just kind of hit the sides here a little bit. There we go. And so we take my uh, fret guard, just go along here, I got a little 1200 grit sandpaper, just to polish the frets a little bit. So now with some of my Music Nomad F1 oil. Put a little bit on here like that. And this is going to help to hydrate and condition and protect 100% natural oils, petroleum and wax free. And then one of my customers recommended using a little sponge. And so I've started using that method I read all the comments and I try to take advice that guys give me some of your comments are a little crazy guys I have to admit some crazy people out there But again, I read all the comments and I appreciate everything you guys do. Hit the like button. Think about subscribing if you want to. And I um, also have Patreon and channel members and I have an Amazon link. I know it's Christmas season. If you go on my Amazon link in the description, 
I get a very, very small percentage of whatever you guys buy on Amazon. And I don't even know if it's 1%. But every month or so, I end up with, you know, 25, 50 bucks, something like that. It's not much, but uh, I really appreciate it. Okay, now let's take a paper towel. And let's just clean this off now. Look at that right there. There we go. All right. So let's check the neck without any string tension on the guitar. This is a short scale guitar and real quick uh, it's got a little relief in it I think a small little turn on that truss rod might improve our playability a little bit here let's see which one goes in there oh it, it's loose it's just kind of floating in there Make sure I get the right wrench in it. There we go. Tighten it up just a little bit so it's not floating around in there. I've heard about truss rods. Um, sometimes they'll rattle if they're too loose. And if it's not a two-way truss rod, and you have it really loose. Um, sometimes they'll rattle around in there a little bit. Okay, one other thing up here. On the tuners, the... Sometimes you can snug these tight. The buttons. And uh, you got to make sure not to over tighten them because the little vinyl washer that's in there will break. So you just want to snug them a little bit. It makes tuning stability maybe a little tiny bit better. There's always that, oh, it's going to help tuning stability. Yeah, I don't know if that's true or not. Okay. So we're ready for some strings. Uh, Roll the string jingle for us. Here we go. Today's string choice. Today's string choice. SIT Power Wound Nickel 10 through 46 Light Gauge. SIT Akron, Ohio. Nickel plated cover wrap over a hard tempered hex core. Wow, hex core. That's what the, um, the Dario does. I think these are good strings. I have no complaints with these SIT strings. And what's kind of cool about them is, other than they're inexpensive at $5.99 a pack, there's actually eight strings in here. So they give you the extra first string, the high E string, and they give you a B string. So you end up with a couple of extra strings. So that's always a bonus, especially in a used guitar shop where I need, you know, I need extras all the time. Guys come in and they start playing guitar and they'll break strings a lot of times. A lot of times you'll see guys that grab a guitar that has a Floyd Rose trem on it and they just start trying to tune it. And I'm like, dude, stop. It's all locked down. Can't turn them like that. That's a little annoying. Okay, so one other thing that I can do. So because this is basically a Les Paul style nut over here, it's a good idea. I have some of this Music Nomad 
tune it stuff and this is uh, basically a nut lube so you put a little bit on here and you mostly just want to put this stuff in the D string and the G string it's probably honestly it's probably petroleum jelly that's in here but this will help the strings to travel through the nut when you're doing a string bend and it helps your string again travel through the nut so that um, it stays in tune better okay I try to do about three winds around the the post of the tuner that one it got a little bit too many I think I did about four and a half on that one right so this is the second pack that has our A string and then again there's two B strings in here so they give you that extra string which is cool and in case anybody was interested I use the Ernie Ball Power Peg Pro string winder and I do have a couple of those for sale at my store in case somebody needs one makes a good Christmas present get that guitar player in your life a Ernie Ball Power Pro Peg Pro string winder And then with that extra B string that they give you, I just sort of rewind it back up and throw it back in. Paper. And then there it is. I got myself a B string for someday. I'll save that for a rainy day. But again, I live in Phoenix, so we don't see rainy days very often here. Okay, here's our third pack. And this has the fourth string, which is our D string. So yes, this guitar is available for purchase. If any of you guys are interested, call the store. We'll ship this one to you. Continental USA only. Can't ship to Canada, unfortunately. It's too expensive. Yeah, so this guitar I purchased in that truckload of guitars. And, it, and this guitar came... You know, with that same same batch of guitars that had that butchered Les Paul. I don't know if you guys watched that video, but uh, go back and watch the video where I bought where I bought all these guitars. And um, it's kind of funny to see this Les Paul that was completely, you know, cut. He cut up the headstock on this one, but the Les Paul he literally just cut chunks out of it. And it made for a fun video. And I was making fun of that guitar. And um, I had six or seven phone calls and probably six or seven emails where guys were like, hey man, sell me that Butcher Glass Paul. So for some reason, that, that guitar appealed to a lot of people. I think it's because uh, it, it would have been fun to put back together. I maybe should have kept it. I sold it the very next day after the video. I should have maybe kept it because it probably would have made a fun video to uh, 
try to glue it all back together and everything, but uh, I don't know. Decided not to mess with it. Okay, let's put a tuner on this thing. Gonna put it in standard tuning. And like I always do, let's just throw it up here on my knee and let me strum on it for a second. That's good. Let's stretch the strings out a little bit. So left hand to kind of protect the nut. Just give them a little stretch. Careful on these high strings. Because they'll break. Don't want to break them, even though they gave me two freebies, right? Okay, let's try again here. There's my front door. Uh, it's, it's Phil. Wow. Okay, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.